I'm a sucker for a good scare. Stuff like ARGs, horror podcasts, and horror short films are just some of the ways I like to add another skid mark to my underwear. But today, instead of looking at any of that, I wanted to pull a bit of an Uno reverse card and show you the least frightening way you could ever try to scare yourself r slash two sentence horror. So go ahead and turn off your lights, face away from your closet, and hey, if you're feeling adventurous, dangle your cock off the side of the bed because there is no way you'll have a chance of being scared during this video. Before we get into the stories, I did just want to point out that it's no fault of the posters for this stuff being hot garbage. Now, as for their participation, you could say there's some fault to be had there, but really, it comes down to the concept. It was doomed since conception. Two sentence horror stories was not a good idea to begin with. Bot size scares is not gonna be scary. It's like a cheap attempt at making something spooky, like a jump scare in word form and very small amount of words at that. It's just, it's, it's bending over the people writing the stories and then screwing the people reading the stories. It's just not good for anybody involved. It's just a terrible concept. And how I'm going to be going through these stories is exactly how they're popping up on the subreddit. I'm not going to be going through and singling out, picking the worst ones from the swampy taint region of the subreddit just to only show you the bad stories. I'm going to show you them the way the subreddit wants me to look at them, how they're recommending them to me, and maybe even look at the top upvoted ones just to really drive home my point, hit a grand slam, and say these stories all suck hippopotamus ball sacks. I was sure the Furby had said, I hate you, but my brother insisted that it said, I'll kill you. My dad said that they were, <laughs> my dad said that we were both wrong because it had no batteries. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's the wrong button. That was the wrong button. I thought I had the, uh, the Vaughn boom sound effect on my soundboard, but that is the, uh, as you heard, the helicopter, helicopter sound effect. <laughs> I chuckled as my dog kept running right past my wife's hiding spot without finding her. It gave me confidence that the police dogs won't find her either. You get it? Because his wife is chopped up. He killed her. You scared? You, you piss in your pants? You got a little wet spot in them undies? Let me see them. <laughs> That's a joke, of course. That's a joke. Also, I believe if this story continued out, it would be the police came to my house to search for my wife, and the police dogs actually have training that my dog doesn't, so the police dog easily found my wife, therefore putting me in jail. And I dropped the soap. Oh, who's that behind me? Sorry, this is only five sentence horror stories. You gotta have six sentence horror stories to find out who was behind me and who stuck it in my butt. Sorry. Journal Diary, Day 13. The zombie virus is not transmissible through... Hmm... Sorry, I read at a third grade. Read, I read at a third grade reading level. You gotta, you gotta stick with me. It, it takes me a minute to enunciate my words. <laughs> this one friend I have, who never says goodbye or anything like that, said goodbye to me today. It wasn't until the truck slammed into me on my way home that I finally understood. What was he in the truck? Was he like maniacally laughing as he slams into you in his rented U-Haul? Like, <laughs> did he murder you? Or does he have some, like, psychic powers and he knew he could see your future? Like one of them people that touch the balls, they rub the shiny balls, and he could tell your future was death. So he said goodbye, because he knew he was going to die. The zombie virus is not transmissible through the consumption of infected flesh. This person has really weak willpower. Only 13 days it took you to eat a zombie? You didn't have, like, canned corn or... Green beans, mashed potatoes, b baked beans, anything you could eat for 13 days? Surely you could eat anything besides a zombie for 13 days. I mean, like, eat your own arm, eat another person, eat your dog, e eat a cow, eat a cat, anything, really. <laughs> I feel like I would eat everything before I would eat a, a zombie, unless you're, like, really looking forward to that and you just... Wanted to have an excuse. I don't know. This one here is a bit longer. Would my English teacher call this a run-on sentence and then give me a slap on the wrist and say, don't do that again, Derek, or you'll get a C on this assignment. Stupid Miss Hobblefoot. I knew you hadn't left us stranded in this bunker and would radio back eventually over. Oh, this is like a, oh, I should have done that in like my walkie-talkie voice. 
exclaimed Private Williams, so the rest of his silent company heard. Roger that. We will be ready for evac at 0400 over. Replied Private Williams, making a loud static sound through chapped lips as he pressed the defrost button on a rundown microwave not plugged in. <laughs> that was just kind of funny. It, it reminds you of like the being abandoned on a, a <laughs> on an island, and you just have like a volleyball that you draw a face on to be your companion. <laughs> Whatever movie that's from, <laughs> uh, you cut out a little hole in the mouth and you start having sex with it and everything. Country boys make do. I cackled as my dog yelped until it died. What a way to start that out. Then I carefully placed my 17th dog skull next to my favorite oak tree. Are you starting to understand what I, I meant when I said this stuff sucks? Like, what does that even mean? You're just talking about killing your dog and then placing its skull after you skinned it next to these 16 other dog skulls you have for some reason. Like, who lets you keep adopting dogs? Surely the shelter would catch on at some point. Serial dog murder. What a good concept. Yeah. Scary. Scary. Are you scared yet? Did you have to turn your lot back on? Who's that flickering the lots? Oh, nose for a two. Often referred to as the call of the void, the sudden urge to jump from a high place or drive into oncoming traffic. Didn't a YouTuber do that in his McLaren? Until roughly two hours ago, it was considered a dismissible impulse. So this person listened to their intrusive thoughts and done something horrible, like smacked a baby across the face and then took off like a happy leprechaun into the sunset. Or maybe they, they stomped on a, a dream stand's face with their boot. Which, that wouldn't really be bad. That would be like a, a due diligence. That'd be justice finally being served. That is a big thing with these two-sentence horror stories as well. You never really have answers most of the time. It just ends off on a cliffhanger like that. Which, I guess maybe some people can enjoy that. I can kind of see how you can lock it. But I can't see how you can be scared. And the point of this subreddit does seem to be horror-related. Two-sentence horror stories. And none of these are scary. You can never... You, you can never argue the case that this is scary. No one thinks this stuff is scary. You can enjoy it. I'm not saying you can't enjoy it. I'm just saying it does not serve the purpose the subreddit is supposed to serve. And I also hate them. <laughs> my heart breaks as I watch the love of my life fall to pieces before my eyes. If only my taxidermy skills had been better. They didn't stitch them up right or they didn't screw their head on in the right place and now their head's their butt and their, their wiener's on their head flapping around like some Rick and Morty alien. <laughs> See, like, two sins is, is not near enough to make something scary. It's an impossible task asking someone to make two sentences or less scary. It's like pulling your wiener to make it longer. No matter how hard you pull, it's not going to get longer. It's an impossible feat. There is nothing more annoying than when your mirror keeps fogging up. Sometimes you just have to take it away from their mouth and push the knife in a bit deeper. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I have heterochromia, which is why my left eye is brown and the right one is blue. This one has a spoiler, so it's like a, it's an adventure. We get to find the mystery. Click to see spoiler what's going to be the answer. The rest of my eyes, however, are orange. Because they're a monster, like Cthulhu or something. Or... My ex-wife. <sighs> you are trapped in a prison of flesh. Let me free you. You gonna skin me? <laughs> skin me like one of your French girls. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't even know what to say after this stuff, man. I'm just reading them and dying a little bit inside every time. Oh, here's one about the James Webb Telescope. I do want to make a video about space soon because I'm really intrigued into the James Webb Telescope and all, all other things space related, but that's not for this video. The James Webb Telescope was fully aligned, ready to observe the universe, and focused in on one universe's very first stars. Orbiting the star, it saw the James Webb's telescope staring back at us. So, the universe is a copy and paste? So like someone copied the Earth in one spot and then pasted it over here, and we're in this Earth? And then the other one's like the first Earth, because it was like one of the universe's very first stars. And then they are James Webb. It's like the same. It's like a parallel universe, because they also have James Webb who made the telescope or whatever. This one's just kind of cool. Not scary at all, but I do think it's cool. You know, I, <laughs> just thinking about it. 
It's like a mon bender. Bends your mon over the table and goes to town on it. The year is 2100. We're the first people to set foot on Mars. Or so we thought until we saw a human skeleton half buried in the sand. I got your picture. You're coming with me. But yeah, that's all I'm looking at for those, man. Dear God, they're they're terrible. Atrocious, one would even say. Not good. <laughs> Not good. They should be called two sentence. Eh. <sighs> Because <laughs> that's the feeling you're going to feel when you read them. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you somehow made it to the end, you're probably dead in your chair right now. And that's the only reason you made it to the end. So thank you for watching in the afterlife. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.